what it means to be a Catholic online. The digital transmission of faith, what it means, ayun, ando na eh, to be a Catholic online. That's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yan. You see that? Okay. That's Pedrito. That's Pedro Calongzon. You see that there? I'm not advertising, pero may binibinta sila doon. So this is a topic given to me for like uh, in the next uh, 20 or so minutes. How actually what I'm going to, to share with you now will be a perspective. The way I see this, uh, so I will not be going into much detail anymore. Uh, I would like to just share with you how I see all these things. Okay? So, how it is? I would begin with the digital, the word digital. When it all started, when the internet all started, it was... And then sometime in the 90s, when it was getting heavier, when technology was getting wider and deeper and more complicated, when it went to the public, the first reaction was not good. There was a journalist from the UK by the name of Emily Bell who said this. Can you read that? Can you read that? That was the first impression of the internet, that it's evil, that it's bad, it's pornography, it's gambling, it's, it's for people who have something else in mind. That at the heart of this was a collective suspicion that seem, seemed to be a belief that anyone who would use the internet for almost any purpose at all was almost certainly up for no good. This has been the prevailing in the 90s. Until finally business came over and everybody was going into it and we had this crash, the, the, the internet bubble, they call it. And, but down the line, there was something happening which was beyond all our expectations, all the scenarios. You know what happened next? Dahan, dahan. You have the Napster, Pinterest, YouTube, it slowly, they came in without, it was not the scenario we have painted, not even the globe they painted it, but still on the ground was the prevailing bias, if I may say so, that the internet was not good. It was something bad. It was something bad. Until today, there is still some, there are still some of us, especially in the church, with that prevailing prejudice. But gradually, as Monsignor Tai said earlier on, the internet has become everything. It's the TV, it's the radio, it's the newspaper, it's the theater. Name it, you have it. It's in the internet. But in the beginning, you have this social network. Because nobody was so serious about it, it was actually more of socializing and more of networking. That's how it came to be. It came very spontaneously. There was no agenda at the beginning until finally people jumped in and started putting some agenda. Okay? Not yet. <laughs> okay. That is how it was. I think I missed a shot. Okay. Then finally, I must have lost the screen. Okay. What happened after this? In 2008, there was gradually, the internet was used for revolution. It started in Colombia. You are aware of the one million voices against FARC. That was the rebellion. People using Facebook to do that using Facebook to launch a campaign against the rebels of Colombia, and they won. After that, a year after, 2009, we have this Arab Spring, which started in Tunisia. 
And you, you know what happened? It's a story. From there, it went to Egypt. Mubarak was out, and everybody was out. And even the Libya, even the, the president of Libya, because of this, they attribute that to social media. Without that, they could have been, you know, still the same until today. So, revolution happened. Not only political, you will hear about the Occupy Wall Street, the economic revolution, and so many more. It went further, even the, the, the environmentalists and all any cause were there using social media to pause or rather to push their agenda. Again, nobody expected that. Nobody saw that coming. Until today, big revolution has happened. Big revolution has happened. Using the internet, using social media to push that. And of course, there are so many agenda. Advertising, business, profit, name it, you have it. They are very clear, even in the Philippines. You remember last August, the one million march at the Luneta? It was actually done, motivated, organized by social media. You can just imagine the potent, the potency, the power, the possibilities that media gives us there. In or on October 15, do you remember what day was that? What happened last October 15? What was that? The earthquake. Grabe. I was driving at that moment. I just finished my broadcast at Radio Veritas at 8.05. I was moving to CBCP. 8.12. Or 8.12. 8.12. I was already receiving a text from Tagbilaran that there was earthquake. So I pushed on my radio on the, on the car. And it was, you know, pinag usapan. So fast, so vast, and so immediate. Talk about immediacy in journalism, since yung mga journalists dito. That was it. It was social media. It was all around. It was texting, texting around. I think that must have been the widest texting or Twittering or Facebooking we had in the Philippines. Until Tacloban came. Until Tacloban. When Tacloban came, when Summer came, when Giwan came, when Ormo came, last November 8th, when I was opening my Facebook, 8 out of 10 posts was about Tacloban. And probably it's because of that that we had so much opinion, so much news, and so much anger against the government. Because without social media, we were not all, not anybody of us were listening to CNN or BBC. Because all this started with, uh, with Anderson Cooper. And that one was tweeted, was, was circularized, was, was spread all through networks. Facebook, Instagram, and so on and so forth. That morning, when I, pagdating ko sa Intramuros, that morning of October 15, I called up the Bishop of Tagbilaran. The name is Bishop Leonardo Medroso. I said, Bishop, how are you? And he said, I am very sad. I am very, very sad. Our talk was, there were long moments of pauses. At the end, he said, but I'm sure there is meaning to this. I'm looking for the meaning. The bigger question was, prevailing on the social media was, why? Bakit? Why? Why this? And it was circulating around because the Visayans are sinners. There was a, 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 a tweet or a, a Facebook post by somebody who was even clobbered with so many attacks from the Visayans and the Filipinos, who said, it's because the, the Visayans are 
sin sinners. That's why they have been receiving all these big calamities one after the other. We were searching for meaning the following day, that was October 16, I heard the answer to that question, why? Do you know what happened the following day? Can you, do you remember? What happened October 16 until 18? Nobody remember, short of memory. What happened? That was the P, C, and E. That was the Philippine Conference of the New Evangelization. Right at the opening mass, we heard Cardinal Tagle saying this, saying this. And he was saying, by the way, those churches, that's, that's in, in the Bilaran. The other one is in Giwan, totally destroyed. And that down there is the picture of Archbishop Palma and Archbishop Du. That is the Cathedral of Palo Leite, the Archdiocese of Palo. Right at the homily of, of, of Cardinal Tagle, he was saying, he quoted the story about St. Francis of Assisi. And he went on to explain that, what he heard from the Lord telling him, Francis, go build my church. Naupo ako. I was not there, but I was listening to the live broadcast of Radio Veritas. Naupo ako. I sat down. I said, this is the meaning of it. This is the meaning of this. And the, the church probably symbolized by all this destruction of Catholic churches. There was even a, there was even a, a website by a Catholic, the, the new splendor of the church who had like 100,000 hits in a day because they posted the Iglesia de Cristo saying that, you know the story, I will not go to that. <laughs> Iglesia de Cristo. But so much destruction of churches. And immediately I opened, I researched because it, it rang on me, there is something here. So, pinalikan ko yung Second Plenary Council of the Philippine document. And right there on those pages, I saw the message of Archbishop Leonardo Legazpi. Right at the opening of the Second Plenary Council of the Philippines, he was saying, we need, said in another way, but the meaning is like that, there is so much destruction in the church, Philippine church today. Not the church of stone, but the church of warm bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit, you and me. They were citing that difficulty. It was there, the Second Plenary Council of the Philippines. They were citing lights and shadows that need to be rebuilt in the Philippine church. Ten years after Second Plenary Council of the Philippines, there was this uh, NPCCR, National Conference on Church Renewal. Remember that in Makati, Guadalupe? They say the same, the bishops. They were saying, they were quoting the Duke in Altum. They were quoting that saying, we have been fishing all night and we could not fish anything, nothing. We have been evangelized since Magellan in March 16, 1521. 15, ano ba yun? Ano? 51. For 400 plus years, because we will be celebrating the 500 years of the Philippines in 2021, nothing happened. We are still the same. What destruction are you talking about? So much destruction in the Philippine church. I, will, I, used, I give this in one of my, my talks before. If you get, do you know who is the first Filipino baptized? Anybody? Raha, Raha Humabon, the, the wife, huh? Reina Juana. If I, if I by magic, if I place Ra, Reina Juana here and I get Ayan there to here to stand here, you will not see any difference the same. Very religious, too sacramentalized, but not evangelized. We are good in procession, we are good in things, but when it comes to to that, Cardinal Tagli was saying there is new paganism in the Philippine church today. We believe God by the mind, maybe by the heart, but by action we are pagans. We go to church, we are corrupt, 
we don't believe, we don't do what we believe. We don't do what we believe. The neo paganism. So much destruction in the church today. Rebuild my church. This is the meaning, and this is the, the call. This is the challenge in the church today. The, the bishops has declared nine years, a novena of years. When the Vatican opened the year of faith, they also started the new era, the era of new evangelization, rather, beginning this year and ending in 2021. Nine years, novena. That is all intended to build the church. The Holy Father said that too. When the Holy Father was in Brazil, in Rio, he said that to the youth, go build the church. It is not only in the Philippines, and even Monsignor Paul will say that even in Europe and throughout the world. Here, we are very religious, but very naturally religious. We can be very religious, but not Christian, because Christianity happens only when we love one another. The moment we show concern to the other, we are. Otherwise, we are not. This is what I was talking about, the new evangelization. Okay? I'm going to invent a new meaning to that old term, the digital divide. The digital divide before when the internet was new, it was like some have internet, the others, the poor have not. That's the original meaning. But here, I would like to, in, to, to, to invent a new meaning. For me, digital divide is something else at least in this context of our revolution today. The digital divide is this. In the church, one, in the church, there is a big dichotomy between faith and life. That's one. A big dichotomy, a big separation between faith and life. You see that? On the upper portion, we are very good in processions. But down here, we are good in Napoles. I believe, sorry. We are good in uh, pork barrel. That has always been the case. For fi almost 500 years now, we are good in this. We need a revolution to do that. We need to, to get closer the divide. That's the first meaning I want to, 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 to share with you. The second meaning that I see in the digital divide is that before, we used to believe in the, in the virtual world, virtual world, and the real world. I don't believe that. That is not true. You clouds, servers, no, I don't believe that. There should be no dichotomy between what I am and what I post on the internet, on Facebook or on Twitter. There should be no divide. If I am here right now and I am this, and I post something, it should be an expression of me as real person not hiding from the anonymity of the digital world. This has been our difficulty. There's so much digital divide to get that meaning. You see people very good on Facebook, but go to their real lives. They are not. They're stupid. Some also are stupid in real life. You go to their Facebook, they are saints. They are saints. For me, social media should flow from the abundance of the presence of Christ in your heart. Otherwise, you are not a Catholic social media agent, if I may call it that way. You are not. In Christianity, in Catholicism, Catholic social media should flow from the abundance of the presence of Christ in my soul, in my heart, in my being. Otherwise, I am like the trolls. The trolls. <laughs> putting something different from oneself. You always hide it from that anonymity. That is the meaning I want to put in there. Our social media f must flow from our Christianity. We need to shorten that divide 
There are no two different worlds. There is only one world, you, the Christian world. There is no world for the internet and another world for the real. No, there's only one. It's fake. It's been an advertising thing that made us to believe that there is a virtual world. No, there is none. There's a cloud. No, there is none. There's only one. It's you. Express that and you express it in any mode you want it. In broadcast, in newspapers, in the internet, and wherever you want it. Finally, allow me to give this image. That image. What is that? The visitation. It, it came from my prayer, actually. It came from prayer. I would like to put an image of social media. The image of the Blessed Mother visiting her cousin, Elizabeth. I would like to describe Twitter as Mary filled with the Word of God, gestating the presence of God in her womb, believing the promise of God to her life despite all these hardships, all the difficulties, all the flood, all the typhoons, and all the earthquake, but carrying the Word of God in her womb and visiting Elizabeth. I would like personally to post that as my own description of a Catholic revolution, of a Catholic social media, of a priest, of a sister, of a lay worker, or plainly a simple Christian, a simple Catholic. We can be real Catholic, I think, in whatever mode there is using that image. Because, like I said earlier, you cannot post if you are not gestating the Word of God in your womb. To be a Christian means to gestate the Word of God in your womb. If you are not gestating, nothing is going to be born to you. Christmas is coming. A lot of people, they gestate, but they abort it and end up not really Christians, but only in name, by baptism. They grow up in stature physically, but remain a first communicant spiritually. Because each one of us here should be pregnant, laden, bearing, carrying the Word of God. If you are that, then you are qualified to post in your Facebook. If you are that, then you are qualified to tweet, to post on, 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 on Pinterest, on Instagram. I have, I was sharing with Father Kanina, <laughs> we were sitting there. I have 20 something Facebook accounts. Not my name. And I'm guilty of this. And I have nine Twitter accounts. I am still guilty of that. Siguro from when I get down of this stage, I will reform myself. And they tweet whatever comes from my pregnancy. Tweet whatever comes from my gestating of the Word of God in my life. Finally, last slide. This is the challenge. I would like you to share this as we go to lunch. This is the challenge. We need a revolution. Hindi na pwede yung pagpapatsi-patsi lamang. We need to resolve the church. Can I give you an example? A very bad example. For many centuries, we could not resolve the problem of pedophilia among priests, sexual abuses. Many centuries. You know, it only take, take one year for New York Times to attack the church and boom, it was resolved. That was radical. That was revolutionary. Christ did it when he came better than that. We can answer the need for revolutionizing social media because according to Cardinal Tagli, while social media is a tool for evangelization, it is also a field that must be evangelized. We need to revolutionize social media. And when we do that, 
we will be able to revolutionize the church in the light, in the context of the new evangelization. You will ask me, why social media? Why not Philippine Daily Inquirer? Why not the classroom? Why not giving retreats? Why not homilies? Why not the, the, no, the, the normal way of doing things? The answer is, the new normal is social media. This is now the habitat of 60% of the population in the Philippines. So many millions of Filipinos are in this habitat. Like what Mr. Paul said during our press conference, for the young, this is new, no new media. It is media. That's where they were born. That's where they are acquainted. How can I revolutionize social media towards revolutionizing the church in the light of the new evangelization? Maraming salamat po!